the overnight Northlink ferry from Aberdeen arrives in Lerwick Harbour early on a bright, sunny summer's morning. So early that little activity can be seen as we sail along the harbour front. The castle-like town hall dominates the ridgeline above the town. The large accommodation barges provide living space for North Sea oil workers. The North Sea oil fields provide a crucial ingredient into the Shetland economy. It doesn't take long before new visitors are out exploring the capital of Shetland. And the ridge top is dominated by impressive stone buildings from the Victorian period. Examples of historic grandeur. Standing tall on the Lerwick ridgeline, above the surrounding dwellings, is the town hall. The clock and its tower date from 1887, but the rest of the building is even older. From the distance, this building appears to be a local church. And it once was, but closer inspection shows it is now the public library. Although a third of the Shetland population live in Lerwick, it is a compact town. There is just one long main street, appropriately named Commercial Street, designed to be for motor vehicles it is essentially just a pedestrian mall. Running off Commercial Street are numerous small narrow lanes or closes and they add character to the town. I always find it interesting to look into the shop windows. And this selection of boiled sweets and others bring back memories of a distant childhood. The tourist centre is located in the centre of town and the friendly staff are all a source of useful information. It's interesting to find that the town was originally established in the 17th century as a base for the Dutch herring fleet. For many decades the local Shetland economy was based on the shoals of herrings offshore. But as the shoals uh, relocated or ran out, the local economy went into downfall. Shetland has a rich history of Viking invasion and Viking settlement, and so it's not surprising to see this reconstructed Viking boat floating in the harbour. Nestled on a low cliff above Commercial Street is Fort Charlotte. King Charles II began construction of the fort in 1665. The fort was hardly finished when it was attacked by the Dutch and burned down in August 1673. It was quickly repaired and opened in 1780. By now the king was George III and the fort was named in honour of his queen, Queen Charlotte. Along the waterfront is the modern Shetland Museum, now one of Lerwick's main tourist attractions. The island has a long history of occupation stretching back into Neolithic times. Although this is a model of a Neolithic dwelling, the full-scale remains of similar dwellings can be found just a few miles from the museum. And of course there are artefacts dating back to Neolithic times. Displays include ancient runic inscriptions and rock art. There are 
are displays of various domestic utensils which wouldn't have changed much over the centuries, as well as tools for peat gathering. There is an interesting display of historic movies. They portray the harshness of Shetland life. The inhabitants largely lived on subsistence farming and fishing. And those inhabitants who could not afford their own animals used a variety of hand tools to sow and to harvest their crops. In contrast, we visit parks and gardens along the ridge line of the township. And we look down from Islesburg House, the beautiful stone building that houses the Scottish Youth Hostel Association premises. A range of facilities and comfortable lounges are set out in the spacious Victorian building. Right on the edge of Lerwick is the Brock of Clickiman. It is suggested that there has been human occupation at this spot since 1000 BC. The Brock we see today dates back to around the 3rd century BC. And it is with this reminder of the length of human occupation in Shetland that we finish our visit to Lerwick. <laughs>